If you could pick the best defenders for the U.S. men's national team, who would it be and why? Hi, if you're new here, I'm Filippo and welcome to Tactical Manage TV. Today we have another episode of U.S. men's national team depth chart where I give you my depth chart of the U.S. men's national team and essentially we break it down into defense, midfield and forwards. By the time this is out, the midfields and the forward video is already out. Don't forget to comment down below your depth chart of the defense. But let me tell you how many players per position so you know how to go about this. So we're going to have four goalkeepers, four right backs, four left backs, and six center backs. And yes, you may repeat players per position if you think they're versatile enough. And it's yours, not Greg's. This is my depth chart, not Greg's. Along with that, throughout the video, I will be saying my old depth chart that we did two months ago because we update this series every two months. So we'll see what changed before World Cup qualifying. All right, with that said, guys, don't forget to hit the like button. I hate requesting that so often. So hit the like button if you're still angry at Jason Christ for missing the Olympics. All right, with that said, let's play the intro and let's get started with the goalkeepers. Okay, so for the goalkeepers, let's give a look on the four goalkeepers that I picked two months ago and the order. So two months ago, before World Cup qualifying, I had Zach Steffen as the number one, Matt Turner as the number two, Ethan Horvath as the number three, and Sean Johnson as the number four. Okay, so what changed now? Not much. Honestly, the only thing that changed is Matt Turner is the number one, Zach Steffen's the number two, Ethan Horvath is still the number three, and Sean Johnson is still the number four. Now, do I think Turner is the goalkeeper for the U.S. men's national team? No. I think for the short term, he's the solution we need. Eventually, if we want to be more dominant in honestly conquer conquer calf and be better abroad we need to have a goalkeeper that can use his feet that's not matt turner will it be zach stefan only time will tell i think zach stefan can recover the number one spot before the world cup but as of now i do have to put turner ahead of him because of the national team performances with that said comment down below what you think who would you start for the u.s men's national team right now matt turner probably a better shot stopper but not very good of his feet or zach stefan better than turner of his feet but not exceptional by any means and a good shot stopper, but not as good as Turner. Let me know. Let's move forward in the field and let's go to the fullbacks. Okay, so for the fullbacks, we're going to do the right backs first. So let's go through the four right backs that I picked two months ago. All right, let's go through that and then see what changed. So two months ago, the four right backs that I picked were Serginho Dest was our number one right back. DeAndre Yedlin was the number two. Reggie Cannon was the number three. And Brian Reynolds was the number four. That is definitely going to drop. So yeah, Brian Reynolds can't be number four anymore. He's not playing for Roma, not being called for the national team. Still young, still a big prospect that we have. But unfortunately, not now. And under Jose Mourinho, it's going to be pretty hard to get minutes. So what changes here? Dest is still the number one, in my personal opinion. DeAndre Yedlin is still the number two, as many might get angry at me for this. I still think DeAndre Yedlin is the number two, based on what we've seen from him in a consistent basis. Along with all the limitations, I, you guys know, I think Yedlin is mostly a pace merchant. But moving on to the number three, Joe Scali is now my number three on the right back position. And I think he can take over uh, DeAndre Yedlin's position very quickly, very soon. But right now, he's my number three. Now, my number four is Reggie Cannon still. Hasn't been playing for Boa Vista very much. Just started playing this past week. But I still put him ahead of Brian Reynolds right now. I still put him ahead of Shaq Moore as well. And we lost Julian Araujo, so that's not even an option anymore. So just to recap, the new list is Dest, Yedlin, Joe Scali, and Reggie Cannon. Two months, we're going to update this, and I think Joe Scali might surpass Yedlin. Now, we're going to go to the left backs. And as I said, remember, I can repeat names if I think the player is versatile enough to play on both. So some of the right backs might be on the left backs. And let me know what you think here as well. So let's go through the four players I had two months ago as a left back, and let's see the new list right after. So two months ago, these were the following players I had on the depth chart on the left back position. So Anthony Robinson was the number one. George Bello was the number two. Sam Vines was the number three. Unfortunately, Sam Vines has a broken collarbone and still hasn't recovered. So he's definitely going to drop on the depth chart right now. And my fourth option was a mix of Dest and Shaq Moore because Shaq Moore could also play as a left back. So yeah, there's going to be some changes there. But before I tell you that, friendly reminder to hit that like button if you haven't already, if you don't like Jason Christ. Now let's go to the four left backs 
that I rate currently as our top four. So here's my current list. My number one continues to be now more than ever, if I'm going to be honest, it's Anthony Robinson. He could improve those crosses that at times when he crosses, it looks like he's shooting on goal instead of crossing. We saw that a lot against Costa Rica, but he is my number one left back right now. And now more than ever, as I said, Joe Scali is my second option on the left back because I do need Sergino Dest starting as a right back if he's available. Scali sh has shown that he can play as a pretty damn safe left back where we saw him play against Bayern as a left back per se. And he was pretty good. And he's been playing as a right back, right wing back, left back, left wing back for Borussia Mönchengladbach. And he's been doing just fine. He can definitely play to me. He's our second best option at the left back position, the safest one we can go with. My third option is Serginho Dest. I haven't liked what I've seen from George Bello so far and Sam Vines is injured. So yes, I will be putting Dest. And no, I'm not going to put Jonathan Gomez yet. We need to see how he can do in a higher level. He's been playing USL. We'll see how he does in Real Sociedad. And as of now, I'm still putting Bello ahead of him. So the order is Anthony Robinson as a one, Scali as the two, Dest as the three, and George Bello as the fourth option. Now, in a few months, when Jonathan Gomez, maybe if he wins USL or maybe gets called up into camp or anything, or if Sam Vines recovers from injury and is playing well for Antwerp in Belgium, they could pass on George Bello. But as of now, George Bello is still one of the options. He's the fourth option in my depth chart. This is not Greg's. I need to make that clear. Okay, we're reaching the end of the video. Now we're going to go to the center back. So let me go through the six center backs I picked two months ago, and then let's go through the six center backs that I'm picking right now. So two months ago, these were my top six center backs. John Brooks was the number one. Chris Richards was the number two. Miles Robinson was the number three. Mark McKenzie was the number four. Walker Zimmerman was number five. And Matt Miazga was the sixth option. Okay, so let me go through the six that I have now and you will see what changed. And I'll explain my picks. Don't hate on me yet. Let me explain. So my number one option is still john brooks yes and i do take into account club performance talent national team performance if i only took into account national team performance miles robinson would have to be our number one but i still believe john brooks is our best center back and i will keep him as number one the number two option to me is actually chris richards yes i do think chris richards is our highest ceiling center back our most talented one one of our most technical good and athletic on the ball as well so chris richards is my number two and then I have Miles Robinson as our number three. Now, listen, this is my opinion. I would still start Miles Robinson, even though he's my third option on the depth chart. I think he suits CONCACAF better than Brooks and Richards, per se. The thing is, his physicality and the way he imposes himself works well in CONCACAF. He is not the most technical on the ball, especially when compared to Brooks and Richards. So this is my take. And hear me out. For CONCACAF, probably start miles robinson he can take the physicality better than these two players not that these two can't take it i just think he's better suited for concaf when world cup comes along you want chris richards and john brooks to do the dual center backs unless we go three in the back then those are the three options but right now i have john brooks chris richards and then miles robinson okay moving on my fourth option is actually walker zimmerman and mark mckenzie's the fifth one and matt miazga is the sixth one now, I know I'm going to get some hate for picking Zimmerman over Miazga, probably. Mark McKenzie has to drop. Not playing very much for Genk. When he played for the U.S. Men's National Team against Panama, he wasn't very good. He gives the ball a little bit too much away for a center back, in my opinion. He looked technical in MLS, but outside of MLS, hasn't looked the same. Walker Zimmerman was reliable on the games he played. I still have to put him ahead of Miazga for now. But let's keep an eye on Miazga. He has been playing well for Alaves in La Liga. We do know he has a problem on being reliable, especially on his attitudes, but we'll see. A couple other players I want to give honorable mentions here are Eric Palmer Brown. That's in Troy at League 1, but he hasn't been playing much. Tim Ream from Fulham that didn't make it on my depth chart, but definitely, definitely makes it on Greg's. And I know some people could mention Henry Kessler in MLS, but sorry, he can't, he can't make it. And I would put also Palmer Brown. Cameron Carter Vickers is another player to keep an eye on as well. I do want to give a shout out to Cameron Carter Vickers. In two months, he might enter my depth chart. He has been starting for Celtic, playing very well in the Scottish Premiership and playing Europa League. So he's another player to keep an eye on as well. All right, everyone, that does it for our depth chart series of the month of October. November, obviously, we won't do it. We'll be updating this at the end of the year in December. Make sure to comment yours down below and hit the like button before you go. Thank you very much for watching, everyone, and have a great day.